This is my 2006 Volvo S60R and it is one of the coolest cars Volvo ever made. Everybody knows that Volvo has a great reputation for practicality and safety, but they've also made performance cars going back years. Believe it or not, Volvo's racing history is fairly rich. For example, Volvo began racing in the European Touring Car Championship with their 240 Turbo model. The 240 Turbo was a highly successful race car, winning the championship in 1985. There were also the 740 Turbo intercoolers, and they were marketed as a grocery getter with as much speed as a Porsche 944 Turbo. In the 90s, they started racing their 850 lineup. The 850s raced in the British Touring Car Championship. The 850 wasn't very successful, but that wasn't the point of them entering the BTCC. It was to prove that your everyday grocery getter could be fast too. Unfortunately for the North American market, the 850Rs and T5Rs only came in automatic. And same with the next generation P80, V70R, and S70Rs. The P2 Generation Rs that came out in the 2004 model year in North America were the first Rs to have a manual transmission for the North American market. They are also one of the last Rs to have a manual transmission. The S60R competed in the Swedish Touring Car Championship and it did have some success. Volvo won the Manufacturer Championship in 2003 and a driver of the S60R, Jan Nilsson, Nilsson, I have no idea, got second in the Drivers' Championship. The next year, Nilsson got fourth and the other person on the team, Robert Dahlgren, got second. For just $20 and $4.75 shipping, plus taxes, you can get yourself the finest P2R shirt out there and you could also buy my drunk driving bumper sticker externally the s60r had a more aggressive appearance than the standard s60 with a unique front bumper and rear bumper it also featured 17 inch as standard and 18 inch wheels as an option v70rs were never factory equipped with 18 inch wheels the interior of the S60R was also sportier with the options of deep navy blue seats, a soft tan colored interior, and unique creamsicle orange seats. It also came with those oh so beautiful and iconic blue sapphire gauges that ours are known for. The leather for the seats is made by the company, the Bridge of Wear, which has supplied leather for other auto manufacturers such as Rolls Royce, Bentley, Mercedes Benz, Jaguar, Aston Martin, and other luxury manufacturers. The S60R and V70R came with factory Brembo brakes. Another weird thing that S60Rs and V70Rs came with was headlight wipers, and they do work for my car. My favorite button S60Rs came with was the uh, headrest killer button for the rear passengers. The car did not originally come with a cup holder right next to the radio, but I can put my phone there if I Google Maps and stuff, so I don't need to have the nav. The P2 Generation Rs were powered by a turbocharged 2.5 liter inline five engine that produced 300 horsepower and 295 foot pounds of torque. It had the choice of being mated to a six speed manual or a five speed torque limited piece of shit automatic transmission. In 2006, they ditched the AW55 torque limited automatic transmission for the much better TF80 six speed automatic transmission, which had about the same zero to 60 as the six speed manuals. It also came with an advanced suspension setup called 4C Active Chassis. Volvo claims that it can automatically adjust up to 500 times per second. There are also some cool options like the car phone and navigation, which is where the screen comes out of the dashboard. Some were also optioned with parking sensors on the rear. After 04, there was a facelift that changed the interior minorly, and it also changed the exterior black trim to body colored trim. 2006, they introduced the third gen Heldex system, which is the all wheel drive system that these cars have, and also the TF80 automatic transmission that I talked about earlier. Most of these issues are not common, especially if the car was really well taken care of. It's just that you, most of them are usually just sold when they have many issues or are about to have issues, and that goes for a lot of cars generally, like WRXs. They're usually pretty reliable when taken care of and not abused. Some of the issues these cars can have include Haldex all-wheel drive pump failing, meaning that you don't have all-wheel drive. Many P2R owners actually have this issue and don't even realize it because there's no light for it, and you need a Vita to read it, like a dealer code reader. Another common issue is the struts for the cars failing, especially with higher mileage. Often P2R owners have 4C issues because it was just such a new technology for Volvo at the time. P2R owners may also experience angle gear problems. Most of the time, it happens when driving hard from a stoplight. 
or not turning off traction control fully when attempting to do a donut in a snow-covered parking lot, like all of us do. Another issue many P2R owners worry about is the cylinder wheels cracking. This is caused by not letting it warm up fully and driving hard or driving hard in warm weather without any upgrades to the cooling system. Some ways to prevent this is to get cylinder wall shims and a new intercooler setup like a DO88, SNOB, or 8FAB intercooler. A new oil cooler will also help a lot. I recommend them all because not only will it perform like how it's supposed to be with the intercooler setup, but it'll also be more reliable. Many P2R owners also experience issues with the TCV or turbo control valve, and it's a fairly easy fix. 9 times out of 10, if a P2R has boost issues, it's a failing TCV. There's very minor things with my engine, like the engine is shimmed, and also I have like a Swede source air filter, but I might remove it later because I've heard issues with them. I have an IPD boost gauge, and it matches the factory dials pretty well. So the boost gauge is really useful to see if your TCV is bad, because if your TCV is going bad, you'll be making more PSI than you should be making, which is around 15 stock. I also installed an IPD catback exhaust. It's not the best exhaust. I would honestly prefer like an 8 fab exhaust. If you want to know the answer if uh, you should buy an S60R or a V70R, um, I'll tell you my story with buying my S60R. I spent eight and a half grand on it and it came with blown rear struts and a uh, blown uh, helix pump and that cost me around 2600 total including parts and labor. Uh, I was quoted 3600 by a uh, shop like a professional euro shop but i ended up just buying the parts from sap euro and then uh having another shop install them i know a lot of other people that have not been as lucky as me though my uh buddy kyle he spent eight and a half grand on his and then he spent i think it was 14 grand in parts um another guy i know he spent um, ten thousand dollars on it and it was a sonic blue it was pretty clean i think it was um manual too and uh, he spent nearly 20 grand because all of the stuff that should have been done wasn't done. It was uh, unfortunate for him. The Volvo car community is one of the best car communities because everybody's really welcoming and uh, very helpful. And they most of the people do want to actually help you and figure out what on earth is wrong with your piece of shit Volvo. <laughs>